Yeah, so I guess I'll just get started. Uh, I've been writing these elegies um, for myself, for my body, because I was having a lot of health, health issues. Um, and then they've started like, I don't know, dealing with queerness and a bunch of other things too. So we're just gonna, we're gonna read some of those. Um, so this one is called An Elegy for Each Alternative John. John is the fruit, not a byproduct of it. Adam and John would piss in adjacent urinals, giggling at the queerness, queering it, queerer, queers by the Johns, queered by John's queerness, proximal queerness, how queer it all was, they were, are, unbecoming, becoming queer fruit, same tree. John is not a Greek patriarch of grandfather Kostas, could not consummate with either of two Hannahs, Leanne or Marilyn, but Patrick, could not follow them into a middle-class Baltimore pathway, 20s in Federal Hill, 25s in Fells Point, 30s in Canton, Kevin Plankton in Under Armour, a jog along the waterfront park with a golden retriever. May his memory be eternal. John is not at the lectern. The spirit of his Irish grandpop concealed itself within the morning glories, binocular eyed as it was in life, horrified to spot its namesake's molted skin, about 17 years old, in the woods just past the fruit and vegetable garden. Shredded flecks clinging to the raspberry vines, mourning the wasted Catholicism strewn among the wild violets. That John has no future. Like Hipponax to Bupalos, that motherfucker, or Archilochus to Neoboli and her sisters, that John, that John writ his own annihilation with malicious wit. John is dehumanized by biopsychology, cognition, and neuroscience. Recognize that petty human desires cannot withstand the inner ape. Take a class in primate social behavior. Be a bonobo. Hannah and Hannah's John. The first Hannah gave lessons on how to be a boyfriend and wrote in gel pen, a breakup note that declares lessons aren't over. The second Hannah enlightens her wife how she and John once skinny dipped in bioluminescent phytoplankton, how they glittered all around each other, her bruised spine flush against his purpled ribs. Patrick and Patrick's John. 12 years of wrestling, 12 years of one-sided erections. In short, this Patrick knew he and that John would no longer know each other past middle school. The next Patrick waited four years till that John was alone in a hallway to confess, then generously helped John, that John write his final poem in college. John during Daniel's rediscovery of cocaine, death by strangulation. Johnny to John in Nichols Arboretum. You will never see what I see when I look at the Huron River. Rini and husband John's parental image of son John. You have to understand that we love you, but we're disappointed. You have to understand we've spent your life imagining how your life would be. You have to understand that we'll need time to reimagine it. Rini is John. But honey, I would love you even if you were green. And uh, I have one more. Uh, so this one is called um, An Elegy for My 20s, because uh, I'm now 30. <laughs> um, so Elegy for My 20s. Dear Professor Halperin, in many ways, this decade of my life began when you were mid-project on your book, How to Be Gay, a seminal work for me, though I haven't read past the, read, though I haven't read past the dedication. For John, it's probably not me. I don't want to know. I lied to you in the interview, said my friend recently came out and I wanted to assist on your research project to better understand him. Here I am a decade later addressing letters to myself as that same friend. My mother found your book on a list of research projects in my room back in Maryland. She called me about it, asked me if I'm gay. I couldn't answer her on the phone for I didn't yet know how to be gay. It outed me anyway. Thanks, John. But there's more you should know. The same weekend, Patrick, my secret boyfriend during Catholic school, called to tell me he never really loved me and that I should see a counselor because I'm too fucked up. I decided to get fucked up, went to a party with strangers about 40 minutes away, thought it was a Halloween party at first, but they were all furries. I got high and watched The Last Unicorn when some guy asked to put his arm around me. I let him and we fucked a week later. I felt confused and went to a fraternity party to make out with some girls went back to my gay RA who patted me on the back, really patted me on the back and jerked me off while I cried. 
I decided not to look when crossing the street anymore, pulled my hat down over my eyes at each intersection, played a game where I wondered if my sense of smell could detect incoming cars based on fumes. I did my readings for a class called Love and Affection in Ancient Civilizations. The Greeks, professor, even 2000 years ago, they were miserable in love. By blood, I thought, I must be their continuation in America. With this in mind, I wrote a poem titled A Period of Final Thoughts. It's still folded into that book of Greek poetry. Then you offered me the job. I declined because I was scared. Halloween weekend is too many days long. I can't recount everything for you since then. Queer bodies, what they've done, what's been done, what I've done. The way my counselor would make me cry. How I can't stop feeling Dan's hands on my throat. I don't know if I should have read your book as a guide. I can't send this to you, but I can write you a poem. Instead, I'll soon write a letter asking you for recommendations for a queer reading list for my comps. I specialize in this stuff now. I spent my 30th birthday writing a paper on how Zhuangzi's inner, chapter, inner chapters are a proto-queer text. I don't think you'll remember me, but I think you'll respond to my letter. I wonder if you'll put your book on the list, if you'll remember me, if I can, if I can bring myself to read it now at 30. That's all. Thanks, everybody.